イカハオライカバイ We need to be speaking truth for truth's sake because it's the only thing that the universe can operate from. Those fellas sitting up there, the states are not the power. The Mauna is the power, the wind is the power, the ocean is the power. We need to remember that. That's what we're speaking the truth for, is for all of these things, because these things are not resources, they're sources of our life and our good and our existence. In 1893, a small group of American businessmen with the support of the U.S. military overthrew illegally and without cause our Hawaiian monarchy. That was the moment where all of our lives as Kanaka Maoli, as Native Hawaiians, were changed forever. It changed and it created a system that oppressed us for the next 128 years. The overthrow really is a confluence of all these different other events. Our kingdom really was a vibrant, cutting edge, international player. I feel like the Americans here and other foreigners, they found Hawaiians being at the cutting edge of the economy and trying to make political relationships right all over the world. And so I just feel like that was threatening for them. And so they needed to figure out how they're gonna take it over. Because you know, that's white supremacy, right? They wanna take over the things that we had. By 1898, the US so-called annexed Hawaii. And by then we were already a minority in our own homeland. Today, we only make up about 24% of Hawaii's population. We're still a minority. We're still landless. We're still without political power. We've been waiting 128 years for justice, and it still hasn't happened. So Kalahui Hawaii was an answer to that. It was a way to rectify that injustice. It was a path forward for Kanaka. 1959, the Admissions Act basically included Section 5. And it talks about those public lands, public lands that essentially were the former crown and government lands of the Kingdom of Hawaii. Nothing belongs to this state. Never has. State Admissions Act is clear to that. The state is nothing but a trustee. They are not the landowner, they are the trustee. And they must manage our land for the betterment of the condition of Native Hawaiians and the general public. The United States admits it in the Admissions Act. And many people poo-poo that and say, oh, I don't want to talk about that, that was unlawful. Unlawful, yes. However, it established land rights to Native Hawaiians. In 1993, when Clinton apologizes, he affirms that we never directly relinquished our rights to our land. Now that they've apologized, have we accepted it? And have they really begun to make it right? Kalahui started actually in the uh, earliest 1970s to Hoala Kanawai. Kalahui was one way that Native folks organized to respond to, you know, the historical injustice. Kalahui is a nation. Oh, Kalahui is composed of just like regular people. It's, we're dealing with the same kind of situations that other regular Hawaiians are. Homelessness, we have family members on drugs, we have reg also just middle class people trying to like make a living just trying to support our families. And then on, on top of that, right, we're trying to get our nation back. Kalahui Hawaii is a native initiative for self-determination. The self-determination is really about the native people being able to make the decisions that impact their lives. It's about governance, it's about our lands, and being able to make decisions that impact not only the use of our lands now, but in perpetuity. We're responsible to make sure that this, this aina flourishes from Mauka to Makai unobstructed, which means every kuleana plays an important part on how we need to work in harmony together in order to provide resources for the whole within one ahupua. And, and I think that's what we're missing when, when we talk about kuleana, on how everybody is responsible of each other. So the first thing we learn, we take care of our akua. 
Second, we take care of our aina. Third, we take care of one another. I, I love my aina. And we have to, malama of, of it, what, what our kupuna has taught us. It should be instilled in us and we should use it every day of our life. The kupuna knew this in, inherently and acted in this way. But we, in the modern world, need to remember that the, the land is the chief and we are the servant. Our akua all dwell at the top of the mountains. The akua gave birth to the aina, and the aina gave birth to the kanaka. We're, we're all of the place. We're not just from the place, we're all of the place. We in the land are one. What happens to the land, and that's why Jason Momoa, he coined the phrase, we are Mauna Kea. And it's when I started to see the landscape being degraded is when I actually started to think, oh, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. You know, the, the human footprint is now uh, destroying that cultural landscape. The burials are being desecrated. I was evicted, our home crushed for the Royal Golf Course in Mauna Wili. And my ohana was getting evicted out of Heikea because of the electric plant. You know, back then having a few telescopes was one thing, but their proposals also for 65 more, you know. Mauna Kea is the heart of our people. The, this is where we, we put our foot down and we say no. No means no. And actually, we're helping you because you don't want to do this either. Because you're just contributing to a system that is failing the earth and all of its people. I have a dream. Why? Because I've been to a mountaintop. The declaration affirms that we have a right to self-determination like all the other nations in the United Nations. And so when we were standing on the Mauna, we were exercising that. Because the state is only a trustee. You don't need anybody else to tell us, to guide us. That's why we make it our own nation. We have our own laws, our own leaders. We don't need no trustees for us. We can do our own. We gotta be the ones to determine our fate. The native people of this land were given the right to initiate their right to self-determination. And they had to do it themselves. We can't wait for the legislature to do the right thing. As a matter of fact, they were so anti-Hawaiian and anti-environment this year, it clearly demonstrated that we really can't wait for them. So we need to rise up, start declaring the truth of it and the way of our people. I think it's a very much a indigenous worldview about not just what's right here in front of you, but for future generations. It's, it needs to be carried on along here. Now the young should learn, while the kupunas are still with them, learn everything that they can. We are connected to this land through our kupuna, pili ponono, as it should be. Olili oh, Okalani said when uh, her letter of protest, to yield our authority until such a time. And I think this is it. And now, it's really important that my kids, I gotta pass the torch to them. We need to put our minds together towards our self-determination. What does a free Hawaii look like and how do I work towards that? Whether you're Hawaiian or not Hawaiian, what is your role in the Hawaiian nation? Everybody gotta have a role. What is your role and responsibility to our akua, our aina, and to one another? You know, how can our own people make the decisions that impact our lives? How, how can we be part of this family of nations like we were before? Kalahui Hawaii is more than just a, a nation or a group or organization. It's really an idea, a dream, a vision, because in order to move forward, we need to have an idea or a vision of where we need to move toward. And so Kalahui Hawaii provides that. It provides that structure and it allows us to exercise 
our right to say, hey, I'm a sovereign Kanaka Maoli, I'm a sovereign Native Hawaiian. 128 years later, we're still feeling the effects of it. We still haven't gotten any kind of reparations. We've gotten an apology, but we haven't received our lands back yet. That is the ultimate goal with sovereignty, is to re regain control back of our lands. I would like to go, and when I die, to know that it's not my end, that my children will live for about 40 more years. And when they go, they'll remember their papa saying, make sure those two boys have the honor of raising the flag before the real prime minister of the new nation state Hawaii.